Now that we've officially bypassed the worst this franchise has to offer, we're back to peak. As mentioned previously, Macross 2 was the black sheep of the franchise, with majority of opinions either ranging from disliking it or just not acknowledging its existence at all. However, Macross Plus is kind of the exact opposite. While most of the sequels tend to be divisive amongst fans for either focusing too much on the music or not focusing on it enough, Macross Plus seems to be the only sequel that everyone in the community universally just goes, yeah, that one's pretty good. So how did they recover from the cardboard that was Macross 2? Well, they brought back Mr. I don't want any Macross sequels Kawamori. And he didn't come back for one sequel, no, 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 he was working on two sequel series simultaneously. A short OVA series called Macross Plus, and a longer television series called Macross 7. And as excited as I am to cover Macross 7, Macross Plus did come out first, therefore I will be discussing it first. So what was it that inspired Kawamori to come back, despite being so against the idea for all these years? Well, I've seen some people try and claim that it was his distaste towards Macross 2 that inspired him to come back. You know, wanting to make better sequels and all. But I can't find any proof of him even talking about Macross 2, never mind showing any distaste towards it. If there is proof of such a claim, I'd appreciate someone provide it in the comments, but for now, I'm just gonna chalk this up to being a classic case of the internet making rash assumptions and projecting their own feelings onto someone else. You see, when looking for why he came back, the more likely conclusion comes from this interview where he directly states, In the current animation market, it's getting harder and harder for an original project to be approved. A project has to be based on an already popular story to stand a chance. In the case of Macross Plus, I decided to go with the Macross name and make the series I wanted to make. And while Kawamori's return certainly helped contribute to how high quality Plus ended up being, it'd be ignorant to credit him exclusively, as there were several other major contributors. Alongside Kawamori, the series was directed by Shinjiro Watanabe. Some of Watanabe's notable works include Cowboy Bebop, Samurai Shampoo, and Space Dandy. And while the usual character designer Haruhiko Mikimoto was busy on Macross 7, Macross Plus's character designs were instead handled by Masayuki, who who's an individual responsible for helping direct and storyboard for various Gainax series. And the composer this time around was Yoko Kano, who's responsible for stuff like Cowboy Bebop and Turn A Gundam. To put it simply, Macross Plus just had a fucking stacked crew, and while production seemed to be going relatively smoothly for everyone else, Kawamori has discussed how mentally and physically draining it was to juggle two completely new entries to his most successful series at the same time. Still though, he persevered and as a result led to the creation of what many consider to be one of the best Macross sequels. Not me though, I like Macross 7. Hey, hey, it's good, it's good, come on, Basara's awesome. Shut up, shut up, alright, we're talking we're talk about Macross Plus now, talk about Macross Plus. The OVA starts with playing a song called Voices, a song that plays so much it is getting close to deserving a counter of its own. You're luckier only four episodes, Macross Plus. I mean, I'm not gonna complain though, the song's a vibe. Not that I could actually play it for you though, due to a certain group of beaters. Anyways, as the song plays, we see three kids playing with some doohickey planes, who I could only assume to be our main trio, because why wouldn't it be? We then cut to present day, where we meet the protagonist of our story, Isamu Dyson. And he's currently engaged in a fucking incredibly animated fight scene. Seriously, while I prefer the aesthetics of Do You Remember Love, I can't deny that from a pure animation standpoint, Plus is the best this series has ever looked. Apparently when working on this series, the team visited real US military bases where they took training sessions on dogfighting and air combat in order to get a feel on how it's done. I'm sure they didn't actually fly around on planes and shit, they probably just like were explained and demonstrated, but I like to think Kawamori piloted a real Valkyrie. Anyways, these studies seriously show, because the movement in camera work is unlike anything we've seen up until this point, it's fucking awesome. What isn't awesome, however, is Isamu's attitude as he keeps disobeying orders and endangering both himself and others when flying. What oh So how do you punish someone who flies planes recklessly? You send them to the planet of Eden to become a test pilot, and what do you know, he's actually excited about it. 
Upon arriving to Eden, he's brought to a conference where they explain a project they're working on. This project includes implementing a fold system that's normally found in large ships like the Macross into standard Valkyries. In order to go through with this idea, they first need to decide which Valkyrie should work as the basis for this project through what's essentially a competition, with the two lead contenders being the YF-21 and the YF-19. Isamu is chosen to pilot the YF-19, and this guy who I fittingly labeled as dumb nerd in all of my notes doubts Isamu's ability. And then Isamu proceeds to cook him and calls him a stupid dumb nerd as well. However, this fella reveals he's not just a dumb nerd, he's actually Yang Newman, the super genius desire of the YF-19. Still a dumb nerd. Soon enough, the pilot of the YF-21 arrives, a Zentradi by the name of Gold Goa Bowman. I'll just call him Gold. He's also the kid we saw in the opening scene from earlier. Instead of a heartfelt reunion, Gold begins insulting and pissing off Isamu, implying they have some unresolved conflict going on. And trust me, this is a conflict that will not even be explained until the end. As unlike SDF, which shows you all the drama firsthand, Plus decides to turn it into a mystery where they drip feed you little pieces of information throughout the OVA. We cut to a scene directly afterwards in which Gold is looking into Isamu's file. Just looking at Isamu is enough to get him so riled up to the point where he needs to take meds in order to calm down. While there are characters throughout the OVA that blame his violent urges on his Zentradi blood, the original Seri spent so much time showing us that Zentradi and humans are just about identical, and considering Gold was born in an era of peace, I honestly just think he's a normal dude with anger issues, and the claims that it's because of his Zentradi blood are from a place of discrimination, which is something they touch on later and is also something they touched on in the original series, so it's not too outlandish to say. Anyways, Isamu gets hosed! While taking this girl Lucy on a bike ride, they pass by a billboard for an idol called Sharon Apple. Isamu notes that Sharon's voice reminds him of an old friend of his, to which Lucy claims is impossible, as Sharon is an AI idol. D -d 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 did Shoji Kawamori predict AI in ChatGPT? Seriously though, I'll get it out of the way now. Yes, this series has aged gracefully with the whole anti-AI message. Yes, we're two steps away from Sharon Apple becoming real, and yes, Kawamori said that Hatsune Miku unnerves him. They even show just this dystopian worship of Sharon, with her name littered throughout the city. We then see a press conference that's hosted by a girl who's from the opening, with her name being Myung Fang Lone. There's also a part where they say that Sharon has become the number one idol people want as a girlfriend, and honestly, if I were Minmei watching that, I'd be pissed. I'd order Misa to turn the Mega Road around, and we'd be fucking laying waste to Eden Zentradi style. Anyways, we cut to Gold, who's overhearing the press conference in the cafeteria and instantly recognizes it as Myung. And then we get another scene where Myung is walking the red carpet with the Sharon Apple console with this fucking scary music playing. This whole scene just encapsulates how dystopian an AI idol is. It's really well done, but also really unnerving. After the event, Myung proceeds to visit a park she often spent time at as a child, before encountering Gold, who expected she'd be there. They have a brief discussion where they catch up on what they've been doing these past several years, albeit with some slight tension in the air. As soon as Gold notices Myung's uneasiness, he tries comforting her, hugging her and telling her just to let go of the past until BOOM Isamu shows up. And they clearly still have some beef, cause Gold and Isamu immediately break out into a brawl, which Myung quickly breaks up, telling them things aren't the same anymore. The way this scene is framed with both Gold and Myung being hostile towards Isamu leads the viewer to believe that Isamu is the cause of whatever broke their relationship. Which, considering he's shown to be nothing but a reckless hothead up until this point, is a pretty reasonable assumption. And to wrap up this episode, we have a gorgeously animated scene in which Isamu and Gold have missile dodge test runs. While Gold completes his task with ease, Isamu fumbles to the point where he even gets in the way of Gold's practice, thus making him fumble too. As Gold's anger towards Isamu boils, his meds begin to wear off, sending him into a traumatic shock about whatever happened between the trio. While in a daze, he loses control of his Valkyrie and begins crashing downward. 
Isamu kind of just watches Smoke in that pack watch for a bit, but he still pulls through at the last second to save him. And how does Gold repay him for this? He lets his anger get the best of him, perfectly calculates how to kill him, and proceeds to slam Isamu's Valkyrie down while landing, causing a massive accident, nearly killing him. Well, that just happened. Shut the fuck up, Ultimate Spider-Man! Get off of my channel! Episode 2 starts with Mewing strapped to a brainwave doohickey device. To further elaborate, Sharon Apple isn't a complete AI. Rather, Mewing is sort of her puppet master. While she doesn't have 100% control of Sharon, Sharon still responds to her brainwaves. This scene is them simply setting up for the concert, a concert that, out of sheer curiosity, Isamu attends. Also, Lucy and Yang are there. While they enjoy a nice evening, Gold is held at the base for questioning about why he attempted murder, and he simply just proclaims, Oh no, my finger slipped. After all the hype surrounding her, we finally get to see the Sharon Apple concert. And honestly, yeah, this is easily one of the highlights of the OVA. Both the visuals and the songs fucking hit it out of the park. While the songs are very bizarre and abstract, they still sound really pleasing, almost soothing in a way. And as for the visuals, they blend 90s CGI with some trippy hand-drawn shit that utilizes all sorts of colors and flashing lights. You never know exactly what you're looking at or what you're listening to, and yet you can't look away. They did a fantastic job conveying how dystopian yet hypnotic Sharon Apple can be. Which is fitting because her songs are literally putting people in hypnotic trances. While everyone's distracted, for some fucking insane reason Yang decides to test his hacking skills by trying to hack Sharon Apple. Which is just as risky as it sounds, but he somehow succeeds. When he orders Sharon to come to him, we get this really simple yet awesome shot where it looks like she's about to come to him, but she actually goes to Isamu. This is very obviously due to her synchronization with Myung and her inner desire to be with Isamu. After the concert's complete, we get another awesome test flight scene where Isamu draws a dinosaur bird in the sky. Only to be followed up with fucking Valkyrie paintball, hell yeah! This montage is basically just Isamu flexing how cool he is, and the animators flexing how talented they are. Only to show the colonel scolding Isamu for being a dumbass. Which yeah, he is, but Isamu gets mad and punches the door, that'll show him. We cut back to Myung, who seems to have reunited with her old friends, Kate and Morgan, who have apparently started a family together. Cause Morgan, he's chill as fuck, he gets hoes. Anyways, being around old pairs causes Myung to reflect on her past some more, with Isamu and Gold comforting her as a child. And in the midst of these flashbacks, they decide to play my boyfriend as a pilot! We are so fucking back, real Macross, real Macross content. Yes, it's a shitty karaoke rendition by Kate, but as long as there's a QQQQ there, it's fucking peak. Anyways, Myung is fucking lame and doesn't want to sing My Boyfriend as a Pilot, proclaiming that she quit singing a long time ago. Anyways, as Isamu goes to check in on what Yang's up to, he sees that he's still trying to hack Sharon, and then she just creepily turns to face him for a little bit. If I saw that happen, let's just say this dumb nerd wouldn't have a computer anymore. He then gets a call from Kate, asking him if he knows why Myung has given up singing. He says he doesn't know, and proceeds to get pissed off once she mentions that she invited both him and Gold to their hangout. Because he fucking hates Gold! Myung then overhears the phone call and proceeds to leave, not wanting to see either Isamu or Gold, as she wishes to avoid thinking about her past in any way, shape, or form. And then when she leaves, poor fucking Gold pulls up and is like, Hi, she did my boy so dirty. Leaving my goat like that, all so she can mope in her room about how her life sucks and she wants to die. Isamu's also moping, spamming M on his keyboard, which... Th th that's an oddly specific thing I can relate to. Like, when I'm depressed, yeah, I will just go in my search bar and spam a random key until my dumbass cat sits on the keyboard and downloads several porn viruses that brick my computer. Fuck you! Soon, both Isamu and Gold receive voicemails saying that the concert hall, that Myung is located in, will burn down in 30 minutes. And judging by the fucking ominous camera shots, we can very clearly put together that this is Sharon Apple's doing. After being woken up to the fire, Myung tries to escape only to find out the doors have been sealed shut. 
Thankfully, Gold arrives on time and keeps charging into the door, only for Sharon to be like, alright, this guy's a fucking dumbass, and she just opens the door for him. After getting through a sequence of closing doors that almost crush him to death, they thankfully manage to escape. Isamu also shows up at some point, but he's too late, he's a bum. Later on, Myung wakes up to find that Gold has been treating her this whole time. However, after noticing Gold's own wound, Myung decides to treat him in return. After a bit of discussion and pondering who could have caused the fire, Myung soon reveals her desire to relive the past where her, Isamu, and Gold are all still friends. And considering the person who caused the fire specifically warned Isamu and Gold instead of just, you know, doing it and killing Myung, maybe they wanted Isamu and Gold to save her. After fumbling, Isamu sees the now injured Gold and, as any mature adult would do, decides to make fun of him for it. Gold gets serious and tells him he was the one who saved Myung and he'll always be the one to do so. This ends up pissing off Isamu, further stirring the pot between them. A pot which eventually spills over in their next training session as they break out into a full-on duel. Despite being a relatively honorable duel where they just stick to melee combat, Gold once again lets his urges get the best of him and shoots Isamu's Valkyrie point-blank with a real fucking gun. Leaving us on this insane cliffhanger that implies that Isamu just got blasted. I mean, obviously he didn't, he's the main character, but what the fuck is this guy's problem? Episode 3 starts with Isamu sleeping in the symbiote. As someone who loves wacky sci-fi technology, I'm glad that it becomes more and more prevalent as this franchise goes on. If we don't have the Macross Frontier Scrimblo phones by 2050, we have failed as a species. Anyways, as Isamu wakes up, he sees Myung standing above him, who heard about the accident and tells him he's been unconscious for two days. Bro must have heard about the medical bill because he just tears off his life support and tries running out of there with nothing but sheer willpower. As for Gold, he's being confronted by military higher-ups about the incident, to which Gold again just claims, I don't know, it was just an accident. And then he tries turning it on Isamu, claiming that Isamu loaded the gun so he could kill Gold. But nobody in the room believes him, not because they trust Isamu, but they think he's too much of a dumbass to sneak in a loaded gun. Gold counters this argument by pointing his fingers to Yang, who is easily smart enough to help Isamu pull off such a thing since he's a dumb nerd. The captain gives us our first glance towards the discrimination that Zentradi go through, as he's unwilling to buy Gold's argument due to his Zentradi blood. However, the colonel vouches for Gold, saying that he isn't the type of guy to bring his personal feelings into a training match. And this thankfully works, as they let it go for now. Back on the elevator, the colonel reveals that he's well aware of Gold's situation with his anger problems in the meds, but he's still willing to stick up for both him and Isamu due to his faith in their abilities as pilots. This faith of them's pretty understandable, cause Isamu has somehow driven all the way to the woods despite his life-threatening injuries. And then he eats a shitty apple, spits it out, tells Myung to eat the shitty apple, then when she asks why she'd do that, he's all like, well you don't know if it's a shitty apple if you don't try it yourself. Then she eats the apple, and yeah, it's shitty. I feel like I just described a Rage comic. And Rage Mune does. She talks about how Isamu is always a reckless dumbass, like that time he led them into the snake pit to get some dinosaur eggs. She says that Gold saved them by bringing a gun, and Isamu gets pissed being like, Oh, so you like Gold better than me? Before storming off like an absolute man-child. Myung follows him, and he begins to tell her that her being Sharon Apple's producer instead of a singer herself, it just feels wrong. And then he sees a dinosaur pass by, and he's like, Oh, cool dinosaur, and he fucking leaves her. This man is actually delusional. But I guess he went back for her because he returns to the hospital with her in the back of his bike, a sight that infuriates Gold. He charges at Isamu, where another brawl breaks out between them. And the fact that Isamu is putting up somewhat of a fight despite his injuries means either Isamu is a fucking beast or Gold is a fraud. As Myung goes to break it up, Isamu accidentally hits her to the ground, Spider-Man 3 style. Shit, maybe he really was in the symbiote earlier. And before Gold could beat the shit out of him, Myung begins to have a nervous breakdown. She screams about how their immaturity and their violent nature is what caused their rift, 
and then she says that she quit music because she was struggling to make a living off of it, and as a result turned to supplying emotions for Sharon, which was an easier way for her to get by in the music industry. And while I could understand her struggle of not being able to make a living off of her music, this would be a bit more believable if she sang more than one song the entire OVA. I mean, it's a good song, but you can't make a career out of one song, it's no wonder you fumbled and turned to AI. While Gold tries comforting her, Isamu, on the same page as me, calls her a sellout, and then he tells her to quit feeling sorry for herself before storming off. Which also causes her to storm off, leaving my man Gold all alone. I think now is as good of time as any to address the elephant in the room. All three of these characters are fucking horrible and obnoxious people. Isamu is an irresponsible hothead who just berates everyone. Gold can be a straight up psychopath, having attempted murder on Isamu twice by now and refusing to take any accountability. And Myung just runs from all her problems and wallows in self-pity instead of trying to make any notable improvements. While I said Macross Plus is the least controversial Macross sequel, that doesn't mean it's not devoid of any controversy whatsoever. And these three right here are the reason why. They are just all immature idiots who are trapped in this cycle of both physical and verbal abuse. And I've seen people try to say that this makes Macross Plus an annoying experience, only being saved by its visuals. To which I say... Not really. Yes, they are annoying and they are immature, but let's be honest, have you met a real adult? In all honesty, I can think of plenty real adults who are just as, if not more, immature than the trio presented in the series. Because believe it or not, hitting adulthood doesn't suddenly make you the sage of wisdom with full control of your emotions. Adults can and will act stupid, they can be immature, and they can most certainly be annoying. While I can understand how this would turn someone off during a first viewing, to me, it's this desire to see them grow that makes Macross Plus's character writing so intriguing. And despite them doing fucked up things during the duration of this series, they also provide us with just enough examples of them doing good things to instill me with some hope that they'll eventually sort things out. There's the scene where Isamu tried saving Gold when his Valkyrie crashed. Gold is shown to be taking meds in order to control his violent urges. And Myung both tended to Gold's injuries and watched over Isamu when he was in the hospital. While the characters might seem like a lost cause, it's scenes like this that prove otherwise. Deep down inside, they do care for each other, it's just... Their relationship has been so muddied by something that nobody has had the courage to talk about yet. And it's that question of what happened and how will they resolve it that keeps me interested. But before they can mend things, Myung is called by her assistant named Marge a man who also works as one of the lead developers on the Sharon Apple project. He explains that in order to celebrate the 30th anniversary of ending the original Space War, they'll be heading to Earth in order to host a Sharon Apple concert. And again, I must re-emphasize that if I were Minmei and I saw that for the 30th anniversary of me saving the world with my songs, they were hosting an AI concert, I would be fucking pissed. But, but Sharon Apple's not AI, her AI hasn't been completed. Wrong! Marge has actually just completed Sharon Apple's AI, meaning she's now really an AI. Which means Myung has no real reason to be there anymore besides doing press. But in typical sci-fi horror fashion, this begins backfiring as we see Sharon slowly being able to take control of various technology, all on her own whim. Even dumb nerd Yang's computer gets overflowed with the words Isamu appearing on repeat. Yikes. Anyways, we cut to an airport where Morgan, Kate, and eventually Gold come to wish Myung farewell, with no Isamu in sight. Once Morgan and Kate leave, Gold tells Myung that once he's done with his work as a test pilot, he wants to go down to Earth to be with her forever. Which, unfortunately for him, she just rejects, saying she's not ready for something like that, and Vro clearly can't read the room, cause he hits her with a, I won't rush you. 
bro, you're gonna be waiting a while. And to top it off, she gets on the plane and begins listening to her own music. Honestly, I can't even judge her for this. I've listened to my own videos at work. She even begins crying when listening to her song, kind of like I do when I watch my original Macross ranking video. I swear, dude, Shoji Kawamori should have killed me with hammers for making that. Anyways, the colonel calls up Isamu and Gold to inform them that they can no longer work as test pilots, and the project involving the Folding Valkyrie has been completely cancelled. Why, you may ask? Because now they have AI Valkyries! That's right, Minmei, your boyfriend can no longer be a pilot, because the AI bros have won! Let's go, board yacht club! This unsurprisingly pisses off Isamu and Gold, but the colonel really can't do anything about it, so they just leave sadly. As Isamu sits there depressed, Lucy comes and tells him that she heard the voicemail about Myung's departure to Earth, and she intentionally didn't tell him about it. What is her problem? Alright, seriously though, she's not as petty as I make her sound. She actually did have some pretty good motivations here, with her wanting to stop Isamu from getting so worked up over the past, and thinking it'd be healthier for him to move on from Myung and Gold. Which, while true on some level, I don't think it's her place to decide that. As she leaves, Isamu falls to the ground and proclaims he's lost everything. Kind of like those retro anime screen cap accounts that put a shitty filter over a 90s anime and attach a fake caption. Shinji never fucking said that. Evangelion isn't even devoid of real quotes like that, you just chose the one fucking scene where he doesn't talk. But unlike Shinji, Isamu isn't a quitter. He has nothing to lose at this point, so he is driven by sheer vengeance. Late into the night, he breaks into the bunker housing his Valkyrie, where dumb nerd Yang is awaiting inside being like, I knew you'd show up. You want to ruin the AI Valkyrie's debut, don't ya? But instead of being a snitch, Yang insists on coming, which Isamu reluctantly accepts, before they bust out of the base and activate the now-finished fold system, where they're gonna own this AI Valkyrie. This is an escape that obviously triggers alarm, and Gold is ordered to retrieve him. Back on Earth, Marge is questioned by one of his fellow developers about how he finished Sharon Apple's AI system so quickly. He reveals he used an illegal experimental chip. This understandably freaks out the other guy, and he goes to cancel the Sharon concert. But while on the phone, Marge fucking murks him. Which Myung standing outside over hairs, and she runs for dare life. After a bit of running, she soon makes her way into a room, where the cables on the floor begin to entangle her. As she pleads for help, she's only greeted by Sharon Apple, who proceeds to fucking crucify her. And then she begins saying some creepy ass shit about how things will be fine, and she's merely fulfilling both her and Myung's desire for Isamu. So yeah, Myung is just being psychologically tortured by an AI, and this is just a really fucking weird direction for this series to take. The original Macross had its dark and haunting moments for sure, but the way everything was presented still felt like a classic sci-fi flick. But this latter half of Macross Plus, specifically pertaining to Sharon Apple, feel like they're ripped straight out of a horror movie. It's really bizarre, but I also kind of love it. And everything this series has been building up to culminates into the final episode, which is by far the best one in this series. As Isamu continues making his way to Earth with Golden Toe, Sharon slowly begins to take control of all technology throughout the city. And as her concert begins, Isamu's path is blocked by Earth's defense satellites, which leads to a fucking awesome fight scene where they play my favorite song in the OVA, Information Overload. Which, yeah, no, I still can't play because copyright, but just look it up, it's a fucking awesome. As this all goes down, Sharon begins speaking to Myung, insisting that she has a soul of her own now, and it's become her personal desire to make Isamu happy, which he's probably not, considering bros getting yanked by Earth's gravity while fighting off a million satellites at once. And if this scene wasn't hype enough, once it's done, Gold finally arrives, giving us the long-awaited showdown between the two. Yeah, no, this is by far one of the greatest fight scenes in all of Macross. I fucking love it. 
Not only just from a pure action standpoint, but the dialogue is also amazing. Because in the midst of this intense battle, they're just bickering over the pettiest shit. They're arguing about shit like, I bought you 13 lunches in high school, or Isamu, you destroyed my project. It is the perfect showcase of how fucking petty and bitter these two are. And it concludes amazingly with Gold launching a massive barrage of missiles at Isamu, which seemingly wipe him out for good. And this idea that he actually killed Isamu, it triggers flashbacks that fully show us what happened to break them apart. Unlike other Macross series where the drama is the love triangle, this series takes place post-love triangle, and the drama stems from the result of it. Unlike Minmei, who eventually handled her loss like a champ, Gold just fucking lost it. The minute he saw Myung and Isamu sharing a tender moment together, he just went berserk. Not only did he knock out Isamu frame one, but he shoved Myung to the ground and fucking teared off her shirt. But before he could do god knows what, he looks up and sees his reflection, which makes him realize, I fucked up big time. This moment apparently traumatized him so much that he just blocked it from his memories. Well, at least he blocked out the pieces where he was the one hurting Myung, cause in his head, Isamu was the one who was harassing her, and he merely protected her. As for why Myung and Isamu didn't tell him the truth, they honestly just pitied him, and they didn't want him to deal with the guilt over what happened, so they decided to play along with it. Hoping that if they just stopped talking to each other, they'd all eventually move on. This is a very mature topic for Macross to be tackling, and it's honestly really refreshing. Anyways, surprise surprise, Isamu isn't actually dead, who would've thunk it? We then get this extremely cathartic scene where once realizing Isamu's alive, they reconcile. They begin to talk things out, like mature adults, with them eventually apologizing to each other for how they've behaved over the years, even sharing a long laugh together. So while yes, the characters were annoying, it was that immaturity that made this scene all the more satisfying. I genuinely love it. But before they can celebrate, they begin hearing Sharon's music, and Yang, who I completely forgot was chilling in the back of Isamu's plane the whole time, detects an incoming Valkyrie. This Valkyrie is soon revealed to be the AI-controlled Valkyrie mentioned before. And by AI-controlled, I mean Sharon's the one controlling it much like every other piece of technology in the city. While they begin dealing with the Valkyrie, Myung attempts to escape from the SDF only to realize that the guards have also been brainwashed. She eventually manages to escape from them in an elevator, and even somehow manages to grab one of their guns. As Isamu and Gold continue their fight, Sharon begins speaking to Isamu, insisting that Myung has served her purpose, and now she wants Isamu all to herself. Worried for Myung's safety, Gold decides to fend off the AI Valkyrie by himself, ordering Isamu to go save Myung. And as Isamu makes his way to Macross City, we get a scene in which Sharon activates the original SDF. And as a fan of the original, this scene is genuinely fucking haunting. Not only is the music ominous, but seeing the Macross, a ship that has acted as a symbol of hope, a place that once felt like home, being turned into a mindless tool of destruction by an AI, it legit gave me fucking chills. This is how you bring back the Macross in an interesting way, Macross 2. After some running, Myung eventually reaches the main room where Sharon's console is located. Sharon continues giving her a villain monologue about how she's a reflection of Myung's desires, before giving us this fucking badass shot of Isamu pulling up to rescue her. The shot's cool, but he doesn't actually do anything because Sharon immediately activates the SDF's defense system, forcing him to retreat. Although Yang says he'll try to hack into Sharon's system in order to destroy her with viruses, Myung decides to take a quicker approach and tries blasting her with a gun, an idea that she fumbles because the system is really fucking tanky and due to the recoil of the gun she misses half her shots. Having lost hope, she collapses to the ground, pleading for Sharon to explain why she's doing this. Because despite Sharon's claims that she's simply fulfilling Myung's desires, 
She doesn't desire for Isamu to die, but Sharon explains her intent isn't just to kill Isamu. She notices that Isamu is at his happiness when he's in the sky, pushing himself into risky situations, all for the sake of a thrill. And what bigger thrill is there in life than someone straight up trying to kill you? I don't think Sharon is inherently a malevolent character, She's just a confused and stupid AI who's enacting on Myung's desires. Myung wanted to be with Isamu, and she wanted to make him happy. And due to her link with Sharon, Sharon is trying to fulfill this desire in the most fucked up and corrupt way possible. Anyways, Myung soon overhears Isamu and Gold on the communication system, where she hears firsthand how much they've managed to grow and reconcile. Gold says he planned on grabbing a drink with Isamu once this was all finished. A notion that instills her with hope. Hope that is immediately stripped away when Gold fucking dies! You see, considering the AI Valkyrie could perfectly telegraph their attacks, it was basically an unstoppable beast. And so Gold's only option of killing it was to dive bomb into it, sacrificing himself in the process. Gold's death is nothing short of a tragedy, just as soon as he finally worked things out with Isamu, boom, he's dead. Isamu isn't even given a moment to grieve, as immediately after Gold's death, Sharon makes her way directly into Isamu's Valkyrie. She manages to brainwash Yang, ordering him to shoot Isamu, but thankfully Isamu manages to eject him from the plane before he can get an actual clean shot in. It still does break his helmet though, which I think was just done so we can have him helmetless in the final battle. Which honestly, yeah, I think that works to the following scene's advantage since we get to see his full expressions on display. As Sharon begins trying to brainwash him directly, she comes out of the screen and leans right into his ear to sing, and for a short while it does begin to work. He begins losing control of his Valkyrie, but... In typical Macross fashion, Myung saves the day by stepping in and singing her one song for real this time. The power of real human music overrides the control of AI music. With Isamu being able to snap out of it in the nick of time and make his way to Myung's rescue, we get an incredible shot of him flying directly into Sharon, dodging a bunch of incoming fire from the Macross's defense system, before eventually dive bombing directly in, thus destroying Sharon Apple's system. Sharon gives a pained expression as she dies, with the Macross landing safely back onto the ground. With Sharon Apple now defeated, Myung wakes up as her and Isamu exchange a glance, ensuring that the other is okay. Voices begins playing one more time as it pans out with one last message. Dedicated to you, our future pioneers. Thank you, Kawamori. We will be sure to win the war against AI. So that was Macross Plus, and I fucking love it, I totally understand why it's so beloved. While it isn't my personal favorite entry, I definitely think it's the Macross series with the widest appeal. SDF had inconsistent character writing and suffered from a fucked up production, 2 is just boring and uninspired, 7, Frontier, and Delta lean heavily into the music side of things, which may end up detracting those more into the military aspects, while on the contrary, Zero only focuses on those aspects, severely downplaying the music that makes Macross stand out. Plus, not only strikes a good balance between romance, action, and music, but the presentation and writing quality are so tight that... I have a hard time finding anything to complain about. Like I said, Plus is by no means my personal favorite series, but even in the series I prefer to Plus, I can still think of at least one or two facepalming moments. But for Plus, I can't really think of any scene that actively hindered my enjoyment. It was just consistently solid the entire way through. I mean, I guess some of the side characters could have had more screen time, but... That's a really minor complaint. I didn't need Lucy's screen time for this OVA to be good. But Morgan's screen time on the other hand. Anyways, Macross Plus is awesome. It's only four episodes. You have nothing to lose by watching it. And if four episodes is for some reason too much for you, well guess what? It has an even shorter movie. And we're gonna cover that in the next video. <laughs>